people first. So, and, and this is sort of based off of a concept that uh, NIOSH developed uh, a number of years ago. And these are online. These are just big blow-ups from online. But basically what they did was they took various equipment platforms. Uh, here, you know, one typical kind of dump truck, not unlike this one, right, that we run. Um, they also run some, some larger ones and even bigger ones than this. And basically what they do is a top-down look at that in terms of what the operator can see and where there are, are visibility issues for the operator. And it looks kind of complicated at first, but it's really not. What you're seeing is, is that the gray areas on these are areas where uh, the operator just can't see. Now the yellow shaded areas show where theoretically the operator can see in his or her mirrors, right? That's assuming that they're properly adjusted, etc. Um, and then what they do is they do that at different levels. In other words, what that operator can see on the ground, uh, at a drum height, and then at sort of a, a worker height, maybe just a little bit hunched over, right? So just to give you an idea that they can see different things, they can see, you know, their blind spots change depending on exactly what they're trying to see in terms of height. And these change a little bit, not much, uh, depending on the size and configuration of a truck. And these are online, all right? I just wanted you to kind of physically see these a little bit. Uh, but if you go to NIOS or you can actually come up uh, when we're done and you can look at the website or email me and I'll send it to you. But they're really instructive, I think. What's interesting is then you start looking at other pieces of equipment. So here's a, cat, a, a typical cat loader. And now we got something that looks a little bit like a spider or something. It starts to be a Rorschach test of sorts, right? Yeah. Um, but so, you know, you say, wow, in, in pieces of equipment like this, um, there's a lot less visibility issues, right? And that's probably true for a lot of those pieces of equipment. And then here's a larger Volvo loader. Again, different typical platforms. But these are articulated pieces of equipment. So think about, from an operator's perspective, what you're seeing when suddenly I turn that equipment. What I see in my mirrors changes significantly, right? So, so these are a lot more dynamic when you start getting to articulated equipment. And so that's just something to think about. Uh, and again, whether you're an operator or whether you're a person on the ground, all right? So that's sort of the setup for this. And this is a little bit of uh, audience participation. And so I'm going to rather insist that everybody play along, okay? And if you don't, you're a goober, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants to be a goober, okay? So play with me on it. And I'd like you to get in the truck and play operator for me. You gotta run the server? <laughs> and what I want you to do is. Only if we don't like I you. I want everybody to come down here in the front of the truck. Let's all get cozy down here. It's almost shady. This is gonna go rather quickly. And as you come down here, I'm gonna ask you the question what are the kinds of things that I might be doing as a ground person uh, up in front of this truck? Whether Kenny is in there or not. What are the kind of things I might be doing? All right, I might be leaning on it. That's a fair point. I might be sitting, I might be a shade on it, right? What else? Doing some kind of work. What is it? Could be using a shovel, right? Um, yes, right? Very much so. Take me in the shade. It's a good place to do it, right? What else? Looking at the Come on, give me the obvious one. Talking on a cell phone. I could be talking on a cell phone. There's hooks up here for something. Oh, wow. I could be hooking up snow cones, right? Uh, I could be checking a loose wire. Something's not working, right? The lights, things like that, right? Then you may or may not know I'm here. I may be down here doing this. He comes over and gets in the truck. I was trying to help him out do something, right? I'd say, oh, he's got a loose wire. There's something stuck up in there. There's a piece of brush. I get down there. He doesn't know any better. He's in the truck and pulls forward. And I don't like to be theatrical. Right? It's not that I'm necessarily going to kill. Now I could, but let's be realistic. I could get injured. I don't want to get injured. Okay? So I don't want to split hair between fatality and injury. The point is, I don't want any of it to happen. Right? What might I be doing alongside you? Either on the left or the right. Right? I can be decorated. Let's be realistic, right? Um, I'm 
I'm going to let the rest of that go. Right? He just lobbed it up there for me, didn't he? Any of a number of things, right? And presumably, if I'm doing that here or here, unless I'm really playing hide and seek, then he's going to be able to see me pretty good. Right? If I'm back here, and I'm fairly tight to the machine, I'm not too far. If I'm out too far, I'm really not in too much danger. If I'm back here, Kenny's a pretty good operator. He pays attention to what he's doing. He'll probably be fine, right? Now, if I start getting under here, that's a whole different kettle of fish, right? What do I do with my drum? Okay. Hang on. We'll be right back. So this is that uh, third diagram. Okay, yeah. can you see this? Top of this? Tell me when you can. Can't see it. Okay. So that gives us an idea. So this is a crude example of what NIOS did, right? They probably used really fancy equipment. So this gives me some sense of what kind of area, if I'm at this height, you can't see. This is a fairly low profile drop, right? Think about some of the trucks you guys drive. Very, very different. Okay. Kenny, if I move this over here, can you still see it? Can you see it back here? Here? Okay. It changes. This is where you can see it as opposed to here or there or that, right? It won't get too precise. The point is, is, you'll notice it on those diagrams, it's not a rectangle out here. It can change depending where it is. And again, it can change the configuration and height of this hood as well. You've got trucks that have a real short nose on them. You have some that are longer, higher, weird sculpts, all kinds of stuff, right? So all of this is pretty unique to the vehicle. Sorry, you probably just wrapped that. Um, here's what we want to do next. Follow me. Come back here to the back of the truck. We're going with that. I want everybody to come in here and hide from Ken. Now, come on, it's time to get cozy. Now, who did I steal this from? I stole this from Brian or Ben. He's the one that called this what it was. Some of us are old enough to remember back when we stuffed uh, telephone booths. I'll explain to some of you what a telephone booth is later. Um, and VW Beetles and things like that, right? We saw how many people we get in. Come on, I need more people in the phone booth here. I want you guys to get in here, and then I'm going to ask Kenny whether he can see you guys. Squeeze in a little bit. Let me get cozy just for a second. All right. All right. <laughs> Kenny, can you see anybody on me back here? And these goobers over here? Um, so, I don't know. I'm not good at counting and math. But there's 15, 16, 18 people back here, and you can't see any of them. And look how far this goes back, right? This is sort of, I mean, it may as well be infinity, because, I mean, I suppose it nets down. But he can't see any of these back here. So, what might I be doing up here? Looking up a hitching something, something up, looking up a trailer, working on a spinner of a thing that does the thing solve, right? Um, yeah, that, I could be doing potholes. Uh, I could be getting tools out of here, right? And all of that, while I, if I come up to that side, you might not even notice me. I'm not looking at it right here. Right? So the point is, is and I, I won't belabor the point. You're, you're released. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching, viewers. Uh, so. <laughs> So the point of this is, this is this is all about situational awareness. If I told anybody anything they didn't know already, you all knew this, right? It's even the obvious, but that's what we do in safety, right? We talk, we remind each other about how dangerous some of the stuff we do is, and we do it every day. And that's part of why we get numb to it. We're our own worst enemies, so we have to remind each other from time to time. Um, Again, don't just think of this as a dump truck. Think of this as a skid steer, uh, a loader, you know, a, a milling machine. Again, if you go on NIASH's site, oh man, they list 30, 35 different pieces of equipment. Um, point is, is that think about, you know, where the operator is 
before you go start doing these things. Think about having somebody, before you go crawling under a truck or a loader or whatever, um, think about either locking the thing out or having a spotter or what have you, or having the person who is the operator let them know, right? Because it can happen really quickly to us. That's the point. So it's again, this is really about situational awareness. This really applies to a lot of stuff we do, but around equipment, uh, and again, I haven't done this in about two years, so I used to have the, the statistics pretty well down, and I forget now. But this all comes from a point, is sort of what inspired NIOSH. Um, we kill something like uh, 120, I think it's, I think it's, uh, oh, this. I want to say 120 uh, workers, work just workers in work zones, just from runovers and backovers. 120 just from one of his backers. Forget all the other crazy stuff that happens with work zones that kill people. Um, and about half of those are dump trucks, which kind of makes sense. It's probably the most frequently seen vehicle in a work zone, right? There's more of them than there are anything else. So statistically, that makes sense. But the point is, is this is not a theory. This actually happens. And that's just the fatalities. Think about how many serious injuries there probably have. So in our effort to cut down on serious injuries, any injuries and certainly fatality. It's just about situational awareness. It's something this makes a really good tailgate talk. You don't need me to do it. I'm happy to do it. If you want me to come to uh, your local agency in Delaware, I am happy to do it. I've done it several times. Um, but you can do it yourself. I'm happy to send you the visuals if you want it. Um, this is the kind of thing that I would encourage you to do with your crews as a tailgate safety talk amongst other topics as well.